but uh, this part of the festival compared there, uh, myelinated as uh, Schwann cells. So there is a transition zone between these two parts, and the vestibular Schwann was usually originated from this transition zone. And uh, its origin is uh, cranial nerves, as I said. It usually extends the posterior fossa, it's uh, usually adherent, anterior and anterior bay classifications, Professor has uh, told us today. And anterior A part is the histological, the central part, the cellular part of the tumor, and the anterior bay is the loose postcellular area of the tumor. Uh, so when tumor grows, the tumor closes the cerebral medullary system, and uh, because of that, lateral cerebral medullary system comes upwards and uh, also posteriorly. And because of that, when we uh, open the cranium, we will firstly encounter with lateral cerebral medullary system, and then we have to drain the uh, cerebrospinal fluid from there. So what are the symptoms? I already talked about the symptoms, tinnitus, vertigo, and unilateral sensory neural hearing loss. At, uh, at the point of admiss admittance to the hospital of the patient, we will, we will usually have uh, more than 90% hearing loss. Patient come to the uh, hospital because of the, uh, because of the hearing loss. And uh, third, uh, 10 percent uh, we encounter with sudden hearing loss and it's because of acoustic nerve infection or the cochlear artery occlusion it's uh, the rare, rare symptoms are hoarseness dysphagia and dysarthria one of the surgical indications uh, there's some techniques to uh, assess the patient's hearing uh, audiometric techniques uh, we can use uh, gartner robertson techniques in this audiometry and mri scan is the of course the gold standard and house uh, facial nerve functional scale we can use also we can use uh, Electroneurography in order to assess the uh, conduction velocity of the patient nerve. And afterwards, uh, we can also use vestibular evoked myogenic potential and also as the, uh, uh, we can also use uh, electronistagnography. And uh, what about the surfactive body surgery? Uh, we can use gamma knife for the tumors which is less than three centimeters in, uh, three centimeters, and also uh, if the patient has a NF2, we can use chemotherapy, the uh, vasosum is uh, quite new technique to use. And uh, I will talk about the surgery right now. So this is so two classifications, sound classification and Yashagi classification. Sound classify the tumors as stage one, two, three, A, three, B, three, four A and four B. Stage four B is the uh, tumor pulls the brain stem and also makes a fourth ventricle compression. And this is the uh, worst stage actually. Uh, according to the Yashagi classification, when the tumor uh, grows, uh, beyond four centimeters, it can cause uh, occlusion in the uh, acoductus sylvius. Then uh, we can encounter with hydrocephalus in patients. These are my examples. So patient positioning, uh, we have two or two uh, main patient positioning in the vestibular schwannomas. We can use part bench or main bed dorsal decubitus positioning. Uh, we have to uh, turn the patient's head 30 degrees to the side of the lesion. Uh, most of the surgeons uh, prefer this technique, and other technique is a uh, semi-sitting position technique, as we see below there. A the semi-sitting position technique we also use in Turkey, in my hospital, also in uh, Germany. One more minute. Okay, I'm, I'm going. So these are examples of patient positioning. So I came to the approaches to the restoration one. What kind of approaches we, we can use? Uh, there are basically three approaches, radiosigmoid, transdermal medicine, and middle fossa approach. Uh, for the patients, has no, if, if the patient has no complete hearing loss, we can use the sigmoid or middle fossa. Uh, in middle fossa approach, uh, we preserve hearing, but in translabyrinthine approach, we cannot preserve hearing. That's the main point. And also translabyrinthine approach, we will encounter with CSF uh, leakage, and uh, translabyrinthine approach uh, needs much more time than the other approaches. Uh, that's why we are pre uh, preferring the sigmoid approach, but also we are uh, taking care about the patient's hearing position. These are approaches uh, is my example, yellow, blue, and green. Also the approaches. Uh, we use the retrosigmoid approach, uh, LSO approach, uh, just two centimeters behind the pinna, and also three fingers behind the acoustic uh, meatus. We will do a hockey stick incision. After the hockey stick incision, we have to find the point asterion, because asterion point is uh, just uh, at the point of the junction between transverse sinus and the sigmoid sinus. We have to go inside the asterium point, and afterwards, uh, we will reach the lateral cerebral medullary system. We have to drain the uh, cerebral spinal fluid from there, then afterwards, we have to retract the cerebellum superimedially, and afterwards, we will drain the petrous bone after we reach to the interacoustic canal, and afterwards, we can uh, uh, resect the tumor into the canonical and extracranial parts of the tumor. That's why I'm, what I'm going to do.
Is it some trick uh, what Professor Sami has told us uh, while we are there? Uh, we should retract the cerebellum upwards. Uh, Nervous vestibular cochlearis can be preserved, especially in smaller tumors. And do the master gain a better view? And these are uh, some picture examples of the sigmoid approach. To open it, the asteroid point that I talked about already. And uh, reject the petals both until reach to the internal antiphotic meatus, except supramental tubercle, because supramental tubercle has a close relation with the uh, cranial nerve pipe, and we don't want to get uh, any kind of numbness. The time is almost over, so we need to eat something. These are for the notes. I'm skipping. So uh, I'm finishing. There's complications, hemoglobin, atrophy, hemoglobin, functional loss. Especially if it damages the lower cranial nerve, we can encounter with hemoglobin functional loss. Also, uh, facial paralysis is the main problem of this kind of surgery, and we can lose, uh, lose the gap reflex for the damage to the lower cranial nerves. And we can do another surgery through the facial canal, facial to facial. We can use the swell drops and also uh, hypoglossal transpositions. Uh, this our case, that was our case. You can see there's a small tumor, and uh, Professor Sami has resected the tumor. And uh, with that picture I have taken uh, during the surgery, uh, that tumor was non encapsulated That's why it's yellow. And this is the post op CT scan of the patient. I couldn't uh, get the post op MRI scan of the patient. Uh, that's the post op neurological examination. What I did personally, that, uh, as you can easily see, there is no facial paralysis. And uh, the patient was telling us that hearing is uh, coming back slowly and slowly. And uh, this is my university in Istanbul. This is the uh, first and the uh, and the biggest university of the Turkey.